Hi, and welcome to PPI's webcast. I'm Wendy Finch. I'm the marketing director here at PPI Group, and I want to be the first to welcome you to our Civil 3D 2018 updates and enhancements. I am here with Mr. Kevin Clausen, Senior Application Specialist for PPI Group and Civil 3D expert for sure. Hello, so everyone. thank you for being here, Kevin. Thanks for having me. This is this is this is brilliant. Thank you. Excellent. I'm glad you're here. Thank you. I'm glad you're happy to be here. This is great. Okay. So the uh, 2018 release, which Kevin's going to walk us through um, the new features or enhancements, whatever the terminology is we're using these days, um, he'll give us a presentation and, and a, a little bit more details into that here in just a moment. But I am curious, what is your summary or overall perception of this year's release? It's solid. Definitely solid. Um, this year, unlike last year, is really less about the new big feature and, and more about enhancing what they gave us last year. Uh, last year was uh, definitely an interesting uh, year uh, or release, uh, to say the least. Um, I, I sat in a room with several folks that are, you know, uh, like nerds like myself there. And they kept rolling out new features, and we were all like, "Woo!" You know, it was, uh, <laughs> it was a lot of oohs and ahs. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it, even us, and, and it was great. But but this year, they they really focused on taking those and increasing productivity. Uh, you know, and, and really, uh, again, the focus is about efficiencies. So I would say uh, less. You know, again, just to sort of finish the thought there, less about the new big features and more about just the the overall um, workflow and productivity. Excellent. Well, I'm excited to see it. Well, let's take a look at it. Let's do this. <laughs> and if you have any questions after the fact, uh, go ahead and email us at info at the PPI group .com, And we're going to go ahead and, and let you take it away, Kevin. That sounds good. Let's do it. I was driving home last night, sorry, and uh, this is just me goofing off here. I couldn't help it. I got I to gotta squeeze some fun in. Uh, anyway, I was uh, just about, I don't know, I was crossing around. I won't say where this is at, but not the, not the nicest area right, right through here anyway. And I'm stopping at a stoplight, and I, I turn to my right, and I look at this sign that's, that's hanging on this fence. I don't know if you can quite read it or not, but I, I got quite a chuckle out of it. And if you zoom in on that thing, <laughs> I love this. It says real estate, you know, obviously. But my favorite is right here. They misspelled student. I just love that. I mean, that's priceless. Is that great or what? Is that great or what? So anyway, I called. <laughs> Real quick, most of you know me. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. This is Kevin Clausen. I've been with PPI Group coming up on 17 years this September. Um, I always uh, let everybody know that, and I, I don't know. I scratch my head every time I, I see that. That just blows my mind. So, But anyway, um, a lot of my job entails uh, tech support or really what I do more than that though is build templates, uh, refine processes, training, you know, that kind of thing, consulting. So if anybody has questions after this, you know, please give me a shout. I'd be more than happy to talk to you about, you know, whatever it may be. And anyway, so today's program is going to show off some of the new slick features. Uh, I have some PowerPoint here, so I'll try to be brief with that and we'll get through that and just, I don't know, just show off some of the just first we'll start by talking about it then what I thought we'd do is go in I've hand selected a couple of them that are more exciting than others and uh, the ones that I think that are definitely going to be increasing productivity and before I get too far ahead of myself I think it's important because I know most people are asking it, this is always the first question is it backwards compatible and it is not okay um, this is more like it used to be back in the LAN desktop days all the way up to 2013 or 2012, I guess, maybe 2013. Um, the the uh, program now has been rewritten as uh, as far as the AutoCAD aspect of it uh, or the engine as well as the objects. So just like 17, 18 does not go backwards, all right? But I did pull this from one of the uh, uh, help file that I have access to. You'll, you can see that there where it's uh, highlighted. Uh, if you're in 18, if you set proxy graphics to 1 to save the graphics, you'll be able to get that back into earlier versions. 
but remember it's not by any means you know it's not live it's just proxy graphics it, um, for those of you that have dabbled with it and you have tried to go backwards you get those great big uh, square boxes that's you know we've seen those for years that goes way 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 back um, that this will at least help with that we'll, we'll be able to see the information it is relative it's just not true uh, intelligent object based design anymore so anyway what I'll be kind of poking through here real quick is talking about uh, new alignment functionality, um, expanded corridor functionality. There's some actually quite good ones in there. Uh, bow ties, which came out in 2017, were an uh, automatic fix of bow ties, but I'll, I'll show you a little bit more here in a minute. And then enhanced feature line and grading. What's that? I, I thought the bow ties was a joke. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I actually thought about wearing one today. So let's just fire up here, talking the alignments. And uh, hopefully, I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to go too deep into this. But um, uh, now we have the ability to add dynamic profile to offset alignments. So we've had offset alignments for quite some time, and that's where we can, you know, click on your center line. That would be the parent, and and then we can just offset both sides at the same time, whatever it may be. And then you would have this dynamically linked horizontal alignment and from there you could do different forms of widening and you know what have you but now on top of that and this is where that productivity aspect comes in what I can do is I can actually uh, um, from from that once it's created I can actually select it and I can go in and create uh, profiles from those and these are all dynamically linked and you can see there I don't know if you can quite make that out on the screen here but not only can I um, once I project it off, say if we go at 2% cross slope, it'll actually elevate that offset alignment. And then I can start breaking up that alignment. Um, and that's what I was trying to show in that red box there. I can do it by stations. So think of it this way. If I was projecting out or whatever it may be, and I was trying to tie into some, um, I don't know, um, uh, driveways or who knows, just drainage, whatever, I could say go to this station, start it here, and, and then I can give it a, a larger um, – uh, or uh, um, oh, yeah, I guess a, a larger percent, so it'll go, it'll be steeper, and again, like matching in, or for that matter, like I said, uh, drainage, whatever. And then you can see over here on the right, um, here's just a quick little uh, preview of it. You can see that there's the there's the new tab that allows us to go in and, and uh, manipulate those alignments once they're created. Okay. Now, on top of that, we also have this new thing called connected alignments, and that would be where you would be running into, um, perhaps you have an intersection or whatever it may be, and as you have two offset alignments, I can actually put in a connection between those and throw in a radius, and what it would do is pull the uh, grade coming from one offset alignment to the other, and they stay attached. Uh, the, the idea to all of this is it just gives you that uh, um, manual capability later uh, well I yeah I guess you could say that uh, it's going to give us that manual capability and that dynamic uh, um, uh, link so if I grab one alignment and move it around these curves will automatically move with it all right so now in some of the corridor improvements uh, this is where we get into uh, multiple baselines so for quite some time we've had the ability to extract say feature lines from a corridor okay and and this is actually building on that last uh, slide that I was just talking about we can do that then we can bring in and one of the big drawbacks maybe maybe I'll start there one of the big drawbacks from the feature line when we would say okay let's 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 uh, extract a feature line from say the edge of pavement on the right hand side well when we do that um, it was great we could we could grade off of that we could link it to the uh, corridor and and, and excellent but the problem with it was, is we could not target it. This is another one of those uh, advantages to 18, is I can actually target that with my assembly, which in turn allows me to move my, you know, alignment up and down uh, vertically, whatever, whatever, I, whatever design I'm trying to achieve, I can now target that. That's huge, huge. Also, and you can see here, and I'll try to make heads or tails of this slide for you. It, I actually thought that this was one of the neater ones. Um, what this is saying here, I don't know if you can quite make that out, but both of these edge of pavements here. Now what I can do, well, let backtracking for a second. If I tried to achieve this overall design up to 18, 
what I would have to do is I would have to break all of these up into multiple regions. You can see there's eight, roughly eight regions here. And I would have to create an assembly for each one of those. And what it's showing is on both sides, it's different, um, just different curb returns or different curbs, sidewalks, no sidewalk, whatever it is, okay? So again, I'd have to have assembly for each one of those. In 18, the beauty of it is I can actually run one corridor all the way through, and then I can extract both left and right edge of pavement and as feature lines. From there, I can break that up into just like as if it was uh, into baselines, and then I can add those into my corridor and add uh, any assembly pieces that I want. All right. And that's, and that's what this is trying to, to display, and I think that's fantastic. We now have a, a complete manual control that we've never had before, and it's really, really great. I've done some pretty neat stuff with it so far. Now, this is the one a lot of folks think are, is pretty slick. Back in 17, we did get the bow ties, if you remember correctly. Um, you can see there up on the, on the left-hand side. That's a bow tie, in case uh, you're not familiar with the term, uh, Wendy, I'm not going it, to, it's not actually apparel, it's, uh, <laughs> good to know. yes, so, so we have an alignment that kind of shoots around, you can see that, and because it's such a tight corner there, it's a hairpin, what happens is that from center they project out, and you can see the lines, how they're overlapping, and, and what it's basically doing is creating a bow tie looking um, error, if you will, so, in 17, what happened is that we, we finally had the ability to create these and it would self-heal those bow ties. And that's somewhat what we're looking at over here. However, it wasn't a variable length. It only went to the corridor pieces. And when I'm talking about variable lengths, I'm referring to like uh, uh, your, your uh, daylight lines. Now, it not only will go out and fix your, you know, the, your actual assembly pieces themselves, but it also will work with that uh, variable daylight line, very slick. And and it's and in, and in truth, I mean that's always been the problem. It's usually the daylight line that crosses over and creates the bow ties. So, what what I'm going to poke around and show you here is we'll start with uh, relative feature lines. This is on the grading side. I will show some of the neat new enhanced bow tie cleanup. Uh, some of the section view enhancements. There's one in here that, is, you know, it's the little things, and I, I think this may be one of my favorite parts of it. And then uh, we'll, we'll talk about uh, offset vertical alignments as well as uh, just multi-targeting, that kind of thing. So let's jump in and take a peek. Oops. Okay, so this is an abstract drawing. I, I'm just going to quickly show this off uh, when we're talking about these new feature lines and, and what we're looking at, you know, clearly this isn't a design, but what we're looking at is just a very, very simple surface that's been created by offsets. And you can see that there is, you know, gray break, water would, you know, who knows, shedding to both the, uh, you know, left and right of this thing, all right? And this is actually, if I, if I hover on one of them, you can see that they're both two in the same. So it's just a, a different view of it, basically. So what we have down here is maybe a 2D uh, uh, polyline, whatever, that needs to be projected up to that surface. Okay. So here's this new feature, and I think this is huge. This is a, a really big part of the new, new functionality when it comes to civil 3D. When I, and again, I was talking about this whole concept of efficiency and productivity. This is huge. And I don't I have to show you. I want to tell you, but I'm, I'm sitting on my hands here. So anyway, here's what we'll do. I'm going to switch over, and I'm just going to project that up, create it from objects, and I'll, I'll grab it here, I guess. And you can see how that highlights. And when I hit Enter to this, I'm not going to put it on a side or anything for now. But looking through here, I do want to assign elevations. I'll hit OK to that. Now, for most of you, in fact, I just did a grading class the other day. I may have a, may have a couple of students on this call today. You'll remember that our elevation, we can set that directly. I could do it from a surface, which that is what I'm going to do. And then depending on how I want this 
this uh, feature line to attach to this surface and stay relative to that surface, I could do it uh, with no intermediate gray breaks or in intermediate gray breaks. And what that's talking about is every triangle it crosses will pull an elevation as well as the uh, endpoint or vertexes of the line. So I am going to do that. Now here's the, the, the new tab in here in 18. I can make this relative to that surface. Not only can I do that, I can actually say not only is it relative, now leaving it at zero just basically is almost like sampling an alignment against the surface. But I could say go up 10 feet or up 3 feet or wh whatever the, the purpose is. And, and you'll see how this ends up playing here in just a second. So when I say OK, you'll see that that projected up. And on the right hand side, notice that, that, uh, that, that again, it, it projected up. And if I look at this surface with that, Okay, ta -da. it's definitely on it. Excellent. Now here's, here's where it starts getting pretty slick though. I can pick any one of these lines and I can vertically move this thing up and down. And it should. <laughs> Did that not go? I may have exploded something. But what I was looking for on that Let's let me let me do this. Let's try this real quick. Hmm. No, that's not what I was anticipating. Well, I, I may have exploded something on accident. I'm not sure. But what that should well actually I know. Let's try this. That should already be in there though. There we go. Oh, maybe it just needed to be rebuilt. Who knows? I bet you that's what it was. It just wasn't set to rebuild. Well, I guess it was too. I'm not sure. But anyway, here's here's what I was trying to achieve. You can see when I drastically changed that, that feature line followed it and it stayed with it. Okay. And and now jumping forward here in just a second, the whole idea to that is if I use this new functionality where I can use feature lines as baselines and create corridors. Well, if I have a parking lot, I can actually create an assembly of a curb return, apply it, and if my design changes vertically, whatever it may be, I don't have to go back through, resample, you know, reproject all these lines, rebuild everything. So I'm actually going to undo that, hopefully. Let's see if that comes back for us. There. Yeah, I guess it's just not rebuilding. I'm not sure why. Graphics or something. But anyway, so. Okay, excellent, looks good. But now if I pick that, if I pick that feature, I'll zoom in and just grab it. I just want you to see a couple extra pieces with it. So in that elevation editor, if I snap on that, and here's what I'm looking for. Here's these new settings, okay? Um, one, on the far right, we have elevations derived from, and I told it to snap to that surface. Any one of these vertexes within this can be selected. I can grab it, and then I can switch that over to absolute elevation. And that would switch it back to being a static um, uh, feature line that's no longer attached to that surface. Okay. Also, when I was talking about where we can raise up the, the uh, feature line relative to that surface, that's where we're looking at over here. Right now, I purposely had it stay at zero, but there may be different reasons why. Uh, curb, uh, who knows, a retaining wall or something like that. So taking that a little further here, uh, let's go into another drawing and I'll just quickly throw something together for you. So this drawing here, this is a, a very, very simple drawing. Surface-wise, it's called the design surface. That's what this is here. And maybe just to give you a little background or, or, or the, I guess what we're trying to achieve with it is looking at uh, the, the, how, or how this design surface was created was started with this center one and elevated just as a feature line and offset it both to the left and right or over here north and south at 2% out, okay? And then ended up coming back up at 2% and you can see that it ends up just being sort of a, you know, this could be a temp surface or a design surface, whatever. And that's what we're looking at, okay? Nice. Now down below here, and this is very common, usually a planner will send you uh, 
whatever they want that design to look like and it's just 2D line work and of course you can see it down here. So in this case what I would want to do is I would want to project that line work up and have it attached to that existing or that, that uh, design surface. So not a problem. I will do the same thing that we just did, we just did last time there. I'll go to my grading. Uh, oops. I'll go to my feature lines from objects and I'll select that. You can see where that both of are two in the same. I'll project that up. Uh, I don't need to put that on a site. That's not going to be a problem. However, I may name this because I am going to be later using this in a um, uh, it, to create the uh, outside boundary with the curb. So anyway, I'll, I'll say none feature. I'll just call this uh, lot edge of pavement, something of that nature. Going down this, I will erase that entity. I'll assign some elevations, and again, I'm going to have that select from that surface with intermediate gray breaks. I want to make sure it picks up everything and then I'm going to have it um, snap to it right at zero. And you'll see how that line work goes up. All right, nice. So far so good. And again, it is attached and just to double check my work there relative to surface. That's just the elevation editor. So good. Okay. So then what we would probably want to do with this is this is where we start doing the fine tuning of the grading. Okay, so move this out just a bit and we can watch it uh, in both directions here. What I'm going to do and I, and I should have, let me zoom in just for a second. Here's just a very, very simplistic curb and I'm going to attach that to that feature line. And for those of you that aren't quite up to 17 yet, that this functionality came out in 17. They've just again enhanced it for productivity purposes in 18. So nothing to it. What I'll do is just like just like any other time, I'll, I'll create a corridor. Uh, I'll call this. Uh, I'll just call it lot. Going down here, corridor style. That's all fine. Uh, instead of using an alignment and profile. I now can use the feature line. As far as the site's concerned, not really all that concerned. I'm just going to have it project up. The feature line, I already have it set to lot, edge of pavement, and my assembly. I think that's the only one I have in here, so curb and gutter. And I'm not going to target anything at this point. There's no reason for me to do that quite yet. And I could um, go in and check how that plays out. In fact, let's do it. Let's just, might as well since we're here. And you can see it automatically went through. Everything looks like it's been attached. There's my horizontal baseline. Vertical baseline is that um, that feature line start station all the way around. I could change out my frequencies if I wanted to. Uh, so it's business as usual. And as soon as I OK this, I'll rebuild that corridor. And you can see on both sides there how that played out. And if I just jump over here briefly, I take a quick peek at those. Curious how that looks. And if I switch this to, uh, I don't know, let's go with, uh, oh, what should we go with here? Let's go with uh, wireframe just for a second. That should make it a little easier to see. Okay, neat. Very good. All right, so here's where it gets fancy. What, what I can now do, okay, is add to that corridor. And we would do it just like we, we would do any other time when we're working with roads. We would uh, grab the corridor. It's probably the easiest thing to do. Select it, and I'll go right into my corridor properties. And let's take a peek here on my parameters tab. And I'm going to go ahead and add in another baseline, another feature line. There's the, the site. Now, the thing is, when you do these, you have, to, you have to include a name. So I'll just call this island. Feature line, site, doesn't matter for now. Uh, fe uh, let's see. Yeah, I'll leave the same. Same uh, feature line there. That's just gonna, how it's going to look as it comes in. I'll say OK. And just as if we were doing a curb return in, in an uh, intersection, you can see that that drops down here. There's the base. The only thing is, notice there's no plus out to the left. So that means I definitely need a region. So I'll just right click on it, add a region. Region name doesn't matter. Uh, that's the only curb and gutter that I have. That's my only assembly. So I'll just say OK to that. We'll see that that's Everything's coming together, and I'll just do a real quick rebuilding of the corridor. No, oh. <laughs> I got ahead of myself.
Oops, let me do this. I'm, I'm, I'll whip this back out. We can make that edit, right, Wendy? Yes, yes. Just let me know what I need to do to help. Not a problem. Just just roll the clock back real quick. I think I already had it projected, so I'm just going to remove that for a second. So what I forgot to do there, folks, is just real simple. When I went to my feature line, I didn't add that other one in. I was thinking I already did. That's the island. So I'll just do the exact same thing. Side didn't matter. Name, I'll call it uh, island. Blah, blah, blah. Same stuff. Uh, design surface. Everything's going to be the same. There it goes. Now that now I can do that. So same idea. Grab that. And it's a quick fix. That's one nice thing about Civil 3D. When you do make a blender like that, it's so uh, forgiving. So I'll add that baseline. Uh, baseline name is Island. It is going to be that feature line. I'll, again, leave it as the Island feature line here. And let's see what we get. Mm -mm. I will then quickly add the region, curb gutter. There we go. So let's take a quick peek again. Very nice. All right. So here's how we tie these all together. And, and keep in mind where I'm going with this when I'm talking about some of this is, you know, some of you have probably seen this and this can be, uh, as far as 17 was concerned, business as usual. But the idea is if, in fact, this changes, if, if it's just a vertical change or I actually make different grades as far as the uh, drainage goes, you know, whatever it may be, all of this will dynamically update with just, a, you know, a forcing a rebuild. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn this into its own surface, Okay. So, and, and this would just be a corridor surface. So I'll pick one of the corridors. And again, it's all one. I shouldn't have said one of the corridors. Then I'll build this. Whoops. I'll go the new way here. Selected. Quick corridor surface. Here's the surface name. I'll give this, I'll call it, um, I'll call it lot. top, I guess. Okay, I'll slide on over. As far as the style is concerned, maybe I do want to see the triangulation just to see what's going on with it in case we have to change anything. Here's uh, contours and triangles, perhaps. Looking good. Now, I haven't added anything yet. This is uh, basically what they refer to as a container. Now, uh, a lot of times we would do the top uh, links in a corridor, but this is going to be uh, a little bit different because I want to make sure that all of those features stay intact. I'm actually going to switch this to features and then that little subassembly piece, that curb, these are the different components that are within it. So I'm going to extract the back of curb. I'm going to extract the flange. I'm going to extract flow line and top of curb. Outstanding. And as I said, the over, uh, this is the top, so I want to force it to all of the tops. I just move that out. And if this works out, we'll rebuild it, give it a go. And then I'm just going to grab that surface, show this off real quick. And you can see how it's dynamically held. Well, yeah, it is dynamic if I move it, but you can see how that held. You can see the grade where it's going down both sides, we're showing that 2% cross grade. Now, the only thing that would be wrong with this at this stage of the game is you can see that what it's doing is it's just grading from edge of pavement to edge of pavement. That's not following in the middle there, that break. So there's different things we could do as far as, you know, we could flip triangles or make different forms of edits. But this is where it starts getting pretty slick. I can take these two lines down here, or actually all four of them, and all of these were purposely created for you know just a little bit of forethought with this uh, i'll go right back up here feature lines and i'm going to project or create those objects and project them to the surface so i'll just grab them all i'm not going to do them at one at a time here grab them all and again i don't need a site name i'm not too concerned about it i'll just let it count up for us assign those elevations i will in fact um, 
uh, use that des uh, the design surface. Now, remember, that's the design surface. I'm doing that on purpose because I want the design surfaces elevations. That's what we've designed for the uh, uh, for the returns or, or the direction that the water is going to shed. And again, I'll leave that at zero. And as those lines project up, now all of those are are only in that design. So they're at elevation. And here's how I can resolve this. If I pick one of these, and I'll use the old select similar so I don't have to be jumping through, uh, say, um, you know, draw orders or, or um, selection cycling, whatever. And I'll just do a quick select similar. Oops. I may bail. Let's see. Maybe I will grab them. Let's see. Okay. And with those selected up at the top here, there's an option, and this has been around for a while here, I can add to a surface as a break line. And I'll just switch it over to that lot top. Add the break lines, I'll just call it group or something. GRP, good enough. Standard, I'm not going to weed anything out. I could add in uh, vertices, whatever. In fact, maybe I will. I'll say, uh, I'll, I'll just go uh, supplement every 10 feet just to get a little better uh, triangulation. And I'll probably have to rebuild that. And let's see what we got. Ta-da! And again, if I go grab one of those lines, it, it is attached to that surface, so it'll pull that up or down, or, and uh, there's nothing I need to do other than a quick force or rebuild. Excellent. All right, so moving on here. Now we're going to look at this enhanced bow tie cleanup. And uh, I have a very simple drawing here, um, but it does a nice job of showing it off. So here's a, you know, purposely created, again, relatively abstract, but shows it off. You can see where these bow ties are occurring in these tight corners. So if I were to pick that corridor, just take it into a quick view, just so you can make sure that, you know, we're not, we don't have any horribly bad elevations, something shooting down to zero or something like that. So we're okay. And here's that new functionality, or expanded functionality, I should say. If I pick it, looking good, and I slide across the top, and here's our new buttons in 18. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is I want to clear the corridor bow ties. If I select that, it's going to prompt me and say, specify the starting sub-entity. And for the record, you can actually go either direction. So I'm going to pick that first incoming, the outgoing, and you can see that it gives me this sort of triangulates around the thing. And wherever I go pick with this, and I'll just pick somewhere roughly in here. And when I select that, it says, rebuild the corridor, press enter, or specify another bow tie. I'll go ahead and just hit enter on this. Oop, I didn't quite get in there. If I don't quite like that, look, it looks like that just came out of that. Let me grab it one more time. I can clear that. Oops. Let's try that one more time. Incoming. Oops. Outgoing. There we go. I gave it a bad um, corner there. So, it, and you can see that it's they're, they're not perpendicular. It's mathematically resolving that for me. So it's not only just through the actual subassembly pieces. It's in that variable length daylight line. Great. Now over here, do the same thing, but just to give it a little different feel, I can grab it again. Uh, same idea, clear corridors. I can start. I can pick the next line. Where do I want to fix this thing? Now, I haven't quite shown it or talked about this yet, but what it's actually doing is it's pulling the elevation from that exact spot that I selected. And that's how it's mathematically calculating and resolving this bow tie. Now, I'm going to stay in it. 
for just a second. And I can specify another bow tie. And, and I'll just purposely go the opposite direction. Okay. And now I'll just hit enter. As that calcs up, you can see that it fixed both of them. Excellent. Now here's where it's, it's interesting though. If I pick this, there's per, that's why uh, there's two different settings here. You saw the clear, and I used it actually a second ago, the restore quarter uh, bow ties. Well, if I grab that and move the actual alignment itself and everything updates, everything's fine, but again, it's pulling it from that elevation. And that may or may not be what we're trying to achieve. So if I pick it again, let's go the other direction and mess it up. So I purposely messed it up there. Okay, that's where I'd have to go back in, select my corridor. Oops. Select my corridor, restore the corridor bow tie. And what it does is it'll start in the beginning. So see where that is at. And I have to just skip down or I could do all in one shot. So I'll just skip, it bounces to the second one, I'd bounce it to the third one. Oops, I missed. There we are. And from here, I will uh, select its with a quick enter, and it'll take it back to the uh, the the original bow tie. Well, I guess it's a, worse now. I uh, purposely made that corner tighter. But long story short, now I would go back in, I would select that, and then I would resolve that bow tie again. Uh, for the record, get a hold of me after the fact or whatever. Uh, we, it's one of those funny things. We get these wonderful uh, pieces of new technology, and one of the questions I get all the time is, well, what if I don't want that to happen? Well, you can go into these drawing settings that I believe is in the ambient settings, and you can actually turn this functionality off. And, and you would have to then manually fix any of your bow ties like we've always done in the past. So you, you, it's still, you have the you know, same capabilities. Okay, so now I'm gonna jump over to this uh, buffer. And this is a new tool that we have in here. And I think you'll like this one. If I were to pick one of these sample lines, this is just a quick road. You can see the sample lines as it crosses this corridor that was built. And if I pick any one of these, Okay, and up at the top, maybe I want to now um, create, actually I'll, I'll go this direction because it's already done. I was thinking I was going to create them again. So it's already done. Actually, I'll do section views. And I'll just create multiple views. And it'll pop up here and say, all right, general, it is called Maple Street. Uh, I'll have it automatically go through. Uh, there is a section placement here. And there's a little trick in here. I'll, I'll, let me just point something out under this. I'm going to drop down and pick there we are uh, this plot this group plot style there's a new setting in here under the array tab okay and if you go down toward the bottom it says add drafting buffer size to space between views okay so remember this for just a second and I'll go ahead and apply this I'll say okay and I could jump through all these hoops and, you know, you, you know most of this stuff here. And I'll just go create my views briefly. Okay. So I don't know if you can quite make that out. Hopefully you can see that. But there's this buffer right here. Okay. And that, and if I actually went into the style of that, um, this is just a, 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 a view style. And if I slid over to the display tab, just so you know where this information's at, in case you did want to change any of this out, there's a drafting buffer. Notice that it's turned on. So, okay, big deal. But what does this thing do for us? I now have what the does ability. It do for yeah, us? I know. You're going to be excited. So, I, I, I know a lot of folks have had to do this in the past. Um, you know, you, you go in, you get your, your cross sections, whatever, and then you're putting just regular notes. Um, M text, maybe you're putting revision clouds, you know, whatever it may be. Well, I'll go down to say this one here. And if I select, or if I were to draw, say, a circle, 
whatever, you know, I'm trying to say, okay, this needs to be moved, or, I, I, you know, again, I put text in there, I'll copy a few of these. You know, who knows? And this could be anything, okay? That is just an AutoCAD entity. So what, what this does for us, what this buffer zone does now, is if I go to move this, if I actually do an AutoCAD move, I select the buffer, and I take this wherever I want. Ta-da! See that, Wendy? <gasps> Ooh! <laughs> ah! Isn't that cool? Now, I'm sure a few of you fell out of your chair on that one. <laughs> but, but it is, actually, that is really, really slick. I mean, that's, that's a big deal. Okay, and uh, again, that's during that process of creating it, it's on that second tab there. We just go into the, the group style and we just make sure that that's set. Ooh, you have some applause. <laughs> There's hundreds of people here too <laughs> watching this. It's fantastic. All right, playing beat the clock here. Um, oh, by the way, in case anyone's wondering, if that was outside of it and I moved it, no, it wouldn't, it would not work. Okay. Okay, so moving on, just trying to, like I said, play and beat the clock, and I'll open it up for questions. Uh, maybe I'll just keep this quite simple for now. Uh, there is an offset alignment out here. Let's see. Um, what do I want to do with this? Uh, just, just briefly with, with the corridor as a whole. Might as well just throw something in. Let me th throw something together real quick. I'll just call this uh, Road 1. Same style, great, great, outstanding. Bouncing down this thing a little bit. Uh, yep, alignment, Brickville, Brickville, assembly. Looks like I need to create a quick assembly. Here, I'll just use one of the Autodesk ones. Good enough. Okay. Okay, try that again. Quick corridor. Uh, again, I'll call it uh, road one. Uh, that's all fine. Alignment profile, that's all good. I'll just grab that basic assembly that I used. I won't target a surface here. And I'll set, I'll set baselines along your regions. Now I'll toggle that off. I just want that to punch through. Now here's, here's where, what I was just going for in any of this, okay? Now you can see I, I left all of the both left and right on this as far as the, uh, the, the curb. Looks like they got a sidewalk with an with a inside and outside boulevard. And then, of course, uh, a, a slope out here. Well, if I were to get rid of those... Or actually, maybe I'll do this. Let me copy this. And then I'll get rid of some data down here. Left that as an offset for a second. And maybe, for whatever reason, I want to drop off the, uh, the sidewalk here. And I'm just doing this to be quick. And I'll even take that lane off too. And I'll grab this and just move it. Ah, oh, heck. Let me make this easier. We'll do it like this. I'll just grab that. Let me try it. <laughs> That's just an extra step there. Okay, so here's what I was shooting for on this, is 
we're looking back here I can actually set my court order rebuild automatically oops it didn't go through I have to redo that sorry I'm just had it selected there we are all right Oh, that's right. This is a little different corridor. Everything's turned off on it. All right. So with that, okay, I may take that left side here and wipe that out. And of course, this will have to be set to rebuild. And then here's the whole idea. This is what I'm trying to talk about when it comes to all of these multiple uh, lines and whatnot inside of our, our uh, corridor. And what you're seeing here, this corridor actually is built purposely so it doesn't have all of the features on uh, or all of the uh, links in between them. So notice that it goes past this, these alignments here. Now I could attach these two together, but I'm running a little bit out on time here, um, and they would be linked but I'll just stop it on both sides. Now remember, if in the past what we would have to do is we would have to create all of these different um, assemblies, and I'm just doing this in its most simplistic form here, but I would have to go in, figure out, you know, create a whole other assembly to, to, to match up and create, break it, region one, region two, region three, and then apply a different assembly on that, you know, through that second region. So this is what I was talking about with the ability with this whole manual concept is I can actually go in and I can first pick that corridor and I can extract from the corridor. So feature lines from corridor and we've been doing this forever. And if I go select this, oops, actually I'm going to do a little different. I'm actually going to say all and this came out in 17. Okay. And this is, can be a bit intimidating, right? This is every single thing that you can extract with the multiple lifts, etc. cetera. Um, however, on top of that though, here's all our settings. I can make it dynamically stay linked to the corridor if I needed it to, okay? And maybe uh, for now, I'll turn it off. I just want you to see a, a part of this or an aspect of this and I'll say, okay. And then instead of going click, 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 click and trying to get them all, I'll just turn the top one off by that empty box there and that turns everything off and I what I'd want to select is the edge of traveled way on that left hand side so edge of traveled way there's right edge of traveled way left and that would be the only one I select but remember I could grab them all in one shot if I needed them for whatever reason a grading uh, job who knows so I'll just extract that and if I hit escape you'll see there it is that is the feature line and this can be edited because I didn't actually leave it or, um, connected. Now in the previous version it, we could target feature lines but it couldn't have anything to do with the corridor, it couldn't be created by it. It was sort of a circular scenario where we're saying extract the corridor, this could be then used as an offset or whatever but it wouldn't project out to it, right? And that was, I mean, a huge, huge drawback. Now we can. We can target that, do whatever we want with it, as well as bring that in as another region and then further break it up. And that's all I was really trying to do with this is if I were to grab that uh, corridor first and just to see the, the concept here, I can grab the uh, create a quick corridor with this, you know, whatever it is, parameters, and this is what's currently existing. Well, it's business as usual, add the baseline, that baseline, and you do, again, you do have to name it. I'm going to make it the feature line, and I'll call this uh, feature line, I'll just call it um, left, actually, I'll do how they did it, what was it, um, ETW left, feature line, site, doesn't matter, uh, drop this down, and I have to go pick that feature line, so I'll say okay. Or, or not okay, but the little green cube there, I'll select it. Check, check, check. Okay, 
it looks like it's just about there and all I need to do is add a region all right there's the uh, I don't want the basic I'm gonna grab that other one I should have done a little better naming scheme on it but just for speed I just want to whip through it I'll say okay I'll apply it and I'll say okay and now what you'll see is that automatically went out to it okay and if I grab the whole corridor took a quick little peek at it you can see that it's somewhat business as usual but the, the beauty of it again is I targeted I actually used that the one that I projected or the one that I pulled out of it now here's where this thing starts becoming even more uh, even more slick is I can select that feature okay or for that matter I can go back into my corridor properties and if I needed to I could start breaking this thing up there's the I use that feature line and this is that manual process that I was talking about uh, I could pick it you'll see that it highlights right and then it just depends on what it is I'm trying to do I would most likely want to um, I can either insert a region after or just split it and how about I do that I'll just do a quick split and it's saying where do you want to split it and you can see I have that perpendicular kite string and I'll just say at the uh, maybe that apparent intersection roughly in here wherever that wherever that meets okay and that's mathematically calc in there at least it's trying to I'll hit enter on that Oops. And then what I should get, I deleted a couple of those out, but what I would get, well, you can see, let me just drag that back out, sorry. And here's where I was shooting for. I just drug that back out so we could see it again. I'll split this one. Gives me the old pick box. I'll just rough it in speed because I want to get to questions I'll hit enter and I'll do a quick apply apply now here's the uh, the beauty of this and this is where this becomes so much more uh, I don't I don't want to necessarily say it's faster necessarily but you just have so much more control over it um, I can now grab these and start separating the um, the features not the features but the regions I'll just move it out so you can see what I'm talking about here okay and then you can you know you can be very exact I can actually do it by station or I can do it by you know uh, physically selecting the, the the intersections whatever it may be and from there uh, we can just go it back in if this needed to be you know if I wanted to drop that off or I had a different form of a uh, you know a assembly or a curb or a curb with a you know different slope or whatever it may be and you can do this very quickly, break it all up in one shot, just like that one slide I was showing back there. So, so I'm right up against time here, and I'm going to open that up for questions if anybody has any questions. And I can also be reached after the fact. Let me pull up a quick PowerPoint for us. Alan, um, I can get a hold of Bob after. Thought that uh, there was a, a feature there with the oh, buffer like, yeah, that, that was awesome. Yeah. Uh, Alan, you're right. It is cool. I, I'm sorry. I was trying to play beat the clock on that. I got one eye on the clock and I'm trying to race through it, but it really is that simple. It's just a matter of that, that it's built into that new style. And when you click on um, uh, or when you apply it, you'll see that the buffer's on. And when it's on, anything that you draw within it. Now, just as a, uh, um, I don't know, for, for what it's worth, uh, it, it's supposed to be more like a crossing window. And what I found up to this point is if whatever I draw that doesn't fall completely within it, it's not actually um, keeping that data. So I've had to grab the buffer and make sure that I drag it outside of it. And I'm, I'm just throwing that out there because that's what it's designed to do. But just through my tests, I've found that it doesn't exactly work like that. Um, and I, I believe it will be. I'm sure that's probably going to be one of like the service pack things or something of that nature. But it should be. If that makes any sense. Okay. Um, 
So Matt asks, can you set relative to the corridor surface, the extracted corridor feature line that is not dynamic as a baseline for that same corridor? Yes, uh, and that's that's part of the idea. Well, let's see. If yes, but if I were to if I was trying to create something, there's a it's not a perfect um, yes no answer on this. If if I did an offset, if I had more time, I was going to throw in like a I don't know a turnout or something like that. If I drug it out, it would automatically pull. So that's why I did a disconnect just to, you know, if, if I had more time, I would have done a few different things with it. But the idea is, yes, you can. Uh, however, you may just, you may want to leave that connected because you had an, ex, you know, who knows, uh, interesting grading plan coming off the back of that. So that's usually when you would leave it connected. There's my email up there real quick. You probably already saw it, but just in case, if there is a question and you, you're, I kept you a bit late, so if you want to, uh, just email me and I'll, I'll get you an answer one way or another. And I see you're using a, a photo that is one year old. I think we need to do another ballpark visit well, so that we can update the, we just update need to go, the picture. We, we just go need, need to pick a, what do we call it, a workation spot? Yes, we need a new workation. Bahamas. Bahamas. Do they play <laughs> baseball there? I don't care. <laughs> get the recorded version out as quickly as we possibly can. Uh, visit our website, um, thepppigroup.com. Click on the You're Invited tab uh, for any upcoming webinars and live events. And, Sean, I just saw your last one that came in. I agree. I, he was just throwing out that waiting for or jumping up to 18 before the service pack. He likes that uh, feature where we can attach the feature lines to the surface. And what I've done with it, too, is it's slick. It, you'll, you'll see it once you start using it. I have a lot of drawings open there, and I have a feeling my video card is being taxed a bit. But it's it's uh, uh, it's slick. Once you get everything going together, it, you know you just kind of figure out the new workflow, and it goes great. Okay. We're gonna sign off um, and uh, start the weekend a little bit early, maybe. We highly encourage you all do the same. Yeah, I'd recommend all right. it. Have a safe weekend. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye.